Hey everyone, welcome back with another video now. I'm going to be doing something a little bit different right now. Alright, right now I'm going to be doing a video based on a specific Naruto character. Alright, and why I like him as a character, why he's one of my favorite anime characters, why he's my favorite Naruto character, and why I feel he's overlooked in Naruto a lot. Now, I'm basically going to do an in-depth analysis of this character and exactly what I feel his strengths and weaknesses are as a character. Alright. And that character, as you can probably tell from the title of this video, is Itachi Uchiha. Uh, Alright. He is my... Now, what I feel about Itachi is very simple. He's my been my favorite character in Naruto since he was introduced. Uh, excuse me, and ever since, and one of the biggest criticisms about his character is that pe most people like it that he, when he was liked when he was a villain instead of him being a tragic villain, which is what he is right now. And honestly, I disagree with that. I think he I, he was my favorite character before, but I think he's an even better character now because it adds this additional level of complexity to his character that he just did not have before. Before, he was just your generic one of the mill villain. That's all there was to him. And I'm glad that he became a tragic villain because it adds more that, that extra layer of complexity to his character. Which Naruto, I think anyone will, would agree that Naruto needs more of them. The only two that I can really think of that we have right now would be Itachi and Pain. That's literally it. Okay. So, yeah, but anyways, though, so in, in order to structure this analysis, what I am going to do is, I am going to basically describe Itachi Uchiha in detail, in de detail, and basically explain a few things I think some people overlook about his character. In fact, a lot of things I think some people overlook about his, char about his character. Alright, so Itachi Uchiha was, so let's just get this started here then, I expect this video to be really long, so let's just get this started here then, alright. Itachi Uchiha was born to the Uchiha clan um, as the, the oldest child of Fugaku Uchiha and Mikoto Uchiha, alright, Sasuke being born like, uh, like, Like, four or five years later, I think. I'm pretty sure they're four or five years apart, or something like that. So, so yeah, Itachi, um, so Itachi was born to them, and he was born as probably the second strongest Uchiha to ever be born. Second only to the legendary Madara Uchiha, obviously. Okay, but yeah, and, and of the times, like, he was definitely the strongest. He was a prodigy by every sense of the term, alright? He unlocked his Mangekyo Sharingan at the age of, like, 12 or 13. So, yeah, and the thing is, despite being such a powerful and skilled shinobi, Itachi, growing up basically at in, in, in a time of war that the village had, grew to become somewhat of a pacifist, meaning he hated fighting. Which is kind of ironic for his character and for his power and skill. But that just adds the extra layer of complexity to his character. Is that he's actually a pacifist. And this is something that some people don't really seem to understand about his character. Itachi is a huge pacifist. He does not like so much as fighting if he doesn't have to. But if he has to kill, that just hurts him even more because he doesn't like that. Alright. However, as soon as he unlocked his Mangekyo Sharingan at like 13, I think he was, that's where Itachi's suffering began, which is something that we actually didn't know for the longest time. The only problem here, I think, is keeping this in the dark for so many goddamn years. I think Kishimoto should have revealed this a hell of a lot sooner. Alright, a hell of a lot sooner. I'd say not until Shippuden, like I think doing it in Shippuden was a good tactic for him, but I think he should have still done a, a hell of a lot sooner. Okay, so, yeah. 
All right, but that's basically where Itachi's suffering began. Now, back during the uh, Ninetales, not the Ninetales Fox's attack on the Leaf, all right, Itachi was at home protecting Sasuke, who was still an infant at the time. All right, and he basically told Sasuke that I will always protect you, even though I'm not sure Sasuke could really understand him. He said that to him: "I will always protect you." All right, and I think it's that war that 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 pretty much made. Itachi, if he wasn't already, go direct, become a true pacifist, alright? However, because, during the attack, because the, uh, ninth, or because the Uchiha clan was all but absent during the attack, the, the higher-ups of the village actually blamed the clan for the attack because they weren't present, they weren't helping with the, they, they weren't helping to fight against them, you know, which... I mean, when you think about it, considering, given the power of the Sharingan, that would have been a huge asset, so I don't think it's ever been revealed exactly what the Uchiha were doing during the Nine-Tailed Fox's, Fox's attack on the Leaf. Alright, so that is something to be noted, although it obviously wasn't the fault of the clan. We learned that later on. It was actually the fault of Obito, who was known then as the Masked Man. You know, Obito fought against... Uh, Obito used his Sharingan to control Kurama in, and set him loose on the leap. And then he ended up fighting his sensei and whatnot, but this is not about Obito. This is about Itachi, alright? So because they were unjustly blamed for the attack, the, the vast majority of the Uchiha clan led by Fugaku himself, Itachi's and Sasuke's father, as well as Mikoto, their mother, were plotting a coup d'etat on the leaf so that it would be controlled by the Uchiha clan. All right, and this is initially where Sa Itachi's suffering began. Actually, shortly after, as I said before, he unlocked his Mangekyo Sharingan as, w Sharingan as well. All right, his Mangekyo Sharingan. So... Because of because Itachi was obviously the best, the most skilled member of the clan, they actually they actually had at that at that time, anyways, they actually had him join the Anbu Black Ops ranks, so he would be their go in between with the Leaf and actually obtain information from the Leaf and relay them to the clan. All right. However, Itachi had different plans, because Itachi loved the village more than he loved his own clan, alright? He lo loved the village far more than he loved his own clan, and so he actually served as a double agent, acquiring, acquiring information from the clan and delivering it to the higher-ups of the Hidden Leaf Village, okay? <sighs> And this went on for an un for an unknown period of time, but I'm I'm pretty sure it went on for quite a while. All right, he, and you know this is pretty bad already. Having to put a 13 year old, a kid, through that is pretty bad already. Okay, because when he was doing all that, remember he was just 13. All, all right, and he was still having to, and he was still this fucking double agent. Not to, you know, you know, not to mention it was also said that at 13 he had the wisdom of a of a kage, all right. So he knew that. So so he knew exactly what he was doing, and it came, and there came the point eventually where the Hidden Leaf Village higher ups could not risk the clan being a threat to them any longer. So they ordered. The Annihilation of the Uchiha Clan, alright. And actually, it's kind of interesting because the third Hokage, Hiru Zen Sarutobi, is the only one of them that actually voted against this and tried to find some ulterior way. However, no no one who was involved in the coup d'etat wanted to negotiate. None of them wanted to negotiate. All, all they wanted to do was fight. So... Alright, so that, I mean, I guess, you know, obviously the higher-ups of the Leaf took that as a, kind of a, sort of a, 
declaration of war in in essence all right, all right because that's really what it was it was a declaration of war okay so yeah so that's basically how that turned out however the Donz, Donzo ended up meeting up with Itachi and gave him two and gave him two choices either he would team up with his clan in fighting against the leaf and all of them would be wiped out including itachi's kid brother sasuke every single one of them the adults and the children would all be annihilated or itachi could team could side with the leaf and basically t take out the hidden leaf village himself or not the village take out the uh his own clan himself but he would get get from be granted permission to leave sasuke alive all right you see the kind of shit they're putting this fucking 13 year old through oh my god like the like the village higher ups are scumbags all right needless fucking period the village higher up higher ups were fucking scumbags all except for the third Hokage, who didn't want this at all. He did not want any of this. He wanted a peaceful resolution, but it turned out in the end that there could really be no peaceful resolution because the other village higher-ups didn't want it and the clan didn't want it. Um, so yeah, so so he, of course, agrees to side with the village. All right, because like I said before, Itachi loved the village more than he loved his own clan. All right. So, and before he launches the assault, he or before he attacks the village, he does two things. First off, he meets up with the third Hokage and makes the third Hokage promise to protect Sa or keep Sasuke safe and protected. All right. In Itachi's absence, or he would relay all the information he knows about the village to the uh to the village's enemies and this is very important because it shows that itachi's not fucking around because obviously as a high-ranking member of the Anvil black ops he would know a lot of shit about the village that they may not you know want to get out all right so that was very clever of him right there and i think i think he would have anyways but it never hurts to be careful you know the uh, one other thing that he do, that Itachi does before he attacks the village or attacks the the clan destroys the clan is he actually meets up with Toby the masked man, who he ends up finding out about and finding out that he kind of has a beef with the leaf and he makes a deal with Toby. He says that, it, or rather, has a beef with the clan and he makes a deal with Toby. Itachi tells Toby that if Toby helps him take this kill the Uchiha clan then you know he he'll be able to have his vengeance on the clan but also there must be two conditions one he doesn't lay a hand on the village and two he doesn't lay a hand on sasuke uchiha and the reason why he asks for this assistance and well first up i want to say note how he ma makes a deal with both hiruzen and toby that sasuke doesn't get hurt that's very important for a little bit here okay but anyways, though, the re main reason he makes the deal with Toby, though, is because he realizes that despite his power, he would not be able to take out the entire clan by himself, all right? Now, I think he might be able to if he went Susano, but there's two things with wrong with that. One, I don't even know if he had his Susano unlocked at that point. And even if he did, two, there might be a risk that he'd accidentally kill Sasuke if he tried it. <sighs> So, yeah. So that's why he just wanted to be extra careful. So Toby did help him with it. And so they effectively took out the clans soon after that. However, and this is the part that really struck it hard with me in terms of the backstory, all right? Itachi decided to take out his parents himself. He tied them up and had his katana placed on them and 
so this came as a huge fucking surprise to me that they actually did not hold anything against him. All right. They really didn't. Which I was hugely fucking surprised about because I thought for sure that they would, like, be incredibly, or at least his father would be incredibly arrogant and selfish about it and blame him for everything. But no. I don't remember the exact word, their exact words, but th they basically said, you know, we may have different outlooks. All right. But at least you are follow, following your path, the path that you choose, or something like that. And that we are truly proud of you. <coughs> Alright. And when that happened, like, mm, that really hit hard, okay? Because it's like, goddamn. They were about to die at the, at the blade of their own son. And yet they said that. That was fucking awesome. Alright. So, yeah. Um, and also they say, about to bring up Sasuke again, they say, please protect Sasuke. Again, very important, which I'll get to in a little bit here, okay? And then right after Sasuke runs into the room, you know, he Sasuke runs to the clan's area and sees that they're, they're all dead. And then he runs into the room and right after that, he, or right before that I think it is actually, <clears throat> yeah, Sasuke brings the blade down and kills them both. And then, yeah, and then Sasuke runs in. <coughs> Alright. And the next thing is what he says to, is the combination of what he says to Sasuke and what he does to Sasuke. He says, Foolish little brother. And then he uses his Mangekyo Sharingan to show Sasuke the entire massacre, excluding Toby's involvement, from beginning to end on infinite loop. Now you might say, okay, well that was that was really painful for Sasuke, not Itachi. You really think Itachi enjoyed showing him that? Okay, I'm going to remind you again. That Itachi is 13 when he's doing it, all this. Third fucking teen! Okay? He's 13 when he's doing the, all of this. Thank you. Let's move on now. <laughs> okay? And then, you know, he, he, when Isasuke escapes from that room and he heads outside. And then Itachi had, shows up right in front of him. Alright. Actually, I don't remember if Itachi uses Mangekyo Sharingan on him, on him inside or outside. But either way, though, at this point, that's done. <clears throat> Alright. At this point, that's done. And then the rest of it are his words. I don't remember his exact words, once again. But he basically says something along the lines of, uh, you know what making because at this point Sasuke was Itachi was planning on killing Sasuke but he just couldn't that and this is where I said remember I said before this would be it would be important again now it's important again he couldn't bring himself to kill Sasuke all right and this was kind and you could probably kind of tell this that when I said you know he made Hiro Zen promise to protect Sasuke he made Toby promise to not hurt Sasuke and his parents told him to protect Sasuke. But he couldn't, and, but he was planning on killing Sasuke here, but he just couldn't. Why? Because, to him, Sasuke is more precious than even the, that of the entire Hidden Leaf Village. Granted, he liked, granted he loved the village more than his own clan, but to him, even Sasuke, his kid brother, was more precious to him than that of the village. village all right. And the thing is, he was planning on killing Sasuke, or despite the fact that he was given permission not to, probably because he didn't want Sasuke to suffer. But he could not bring himself to do it. Alright, he just couldn't. So what he said, he made Sasuke believe that he was a true villain, that the only that the reason he murdered their that he butchered every member of their clan was to test the limits of his abilities. Alright. And that he's actually the one who killed Shisui Uchiha, even though he wasn't. Shisui Uchiha technically died of his own accord, although 
it was Donzo that made it to where that would be, could would be possible, okay? But he made Sasuke believe that it was Itachi himself that killed Shisui, his best friend. All right, and that in order to attain power, power enough to defeat Itachi, he would need to take the life of his best friend as well. Sasuke would. <laughs> And I thought that, and I th thought that this was also um, very interesting because for years, be because of this, for years we saw Itachi as just a ruthless, cold-hearted, really generic villain, which he wasn't at all in in the grand scheme of things. Okay, but that's what we thought of him as. All right, so there's that. All right, and and after this, you know, he basically leaves the village after, right after that. Now, please note that this thirteen-year-old's mind, psyche, has been all but broken. All right, it's been all but shattered at this point, from the beginning to the end of the ma from the beginning of the massacre to when he and the, when he finally left the village. It's been all but, his psyche's been all but shattered. Alright. And it's also an interesting note because I don't think we ever see him kill another person after the massacre. Which is interesting. He certainly fought. And he certainly got rough. But I don't think we've ever seen him actually take another life after the massacre. Which is very interesting when you, when, when you think back. When, I mean, in part one, when he fought against... Uh, Kakashi, when he was first introduced, when Itachi himself is first introduced, you know, he uses his Sukuyomi on Itachi, or on, on uh, Kakashi, but he doesn't kill Kakashi, he leaves him alive, alright, obviously in his fight with Sasuke, he doesn't kill Sasuke, because he wouldn't, would, he would never do that, you know, so, in his fight with Naruto, he probably could have killed Naruto right then and there in part two in the uh, Itachi pursuit arc, but he didn't, like, or rather, captured him, which he didn't. So, he... <clears throat> Alright, so I don't think he's ever killed another person after the massacre, which is very interesting. Because, like they said before, he was a pacifist, but there's plenty of times where it, it could have made his life so much easier by killing his opponents, but he didn't. Alright. That's... And that's very relevant to his character deep down because he's a pacifist, okay? Despite the fact that he had to murder, basically butcher the Uchiha clan. But anyways, though, so after he left the village, he ended up becoming an S-ranked missing ninja. Alright, the, and the only ones in the village who knew the truth were Hiru Zen were the higher-ups of the village, meaning Hiruzen, Sarutobi, the third Hokage, and up until his his death. And after that, the only ones who really knew, I'm pretty sure, were Donzo and uh, Koharu, who I believe... She's one of the uh, Hokage advisors. I believe that she is... Um, I... I believe that she's uh, Hiruzen's sister, if I'm not mistaken. And also that one guy that oftentimes hangs around Koharu. I don't remember what his name is, though. But I'm pretty sure that after the Third Okage's death, those were the only three uh, shinobi in the leaf that actually knew the truth about Itachi. All right. Which is very interesting that they're the only three that actually knew. <coughs> after Hiruzen's death, of course. At the moment of Itachi leaving, uh, he was in, of course, new. So those were the only four. All right. And after, anyways, though, after Itachi left the village, he joined the Akatsuki for a few reasons. All right. The first reason, which is actually split into two more re reasons, is that he wanted to be able to keep an eye on the leaf. 
on, he want, well, first off, he wanted to be able to get on the task force that would basically hunt down the nine-tailed fox because he knew it was sealed inside Naruto who lived in the leaf, okay? And he did that for two reasons. One, so he could make sure no one destroyed the leaf. Although, where the fuck was he when Orochimaru attacked the leaf? Um, and two, because he wanted to keep an eye on Sasuke. And he wanted to make sure nothing bad happened to Sasuke. Or, like he said, he definitely would have spread the secrets he knows about the leaf to the enemies of the leaf. Alright. Because, like I said before, he loves Sasuke. His kid brother, more than that of the Lee. Alright. And, af in, in addition, the other reason that he um, uh, joined the Akatsuki was to keep an eye on the masked man, who he thought was Madara Uchiha. Uh, he was under the impression that the masked man was actually Madara Uchiha, not Obito Uchiha. Which is why you could definitely understand why he would want to keep and a close eye on him. All right. You know. In addition, I don't really know if I should get into this now because that's a whole other topic entirely. But I'll talk about it a slight bit. He also kind of had a mutual respect relationship with Pain because both because they both of them understood each other and the pain that they suffered. In the past, so they kind of had mutual respect, and throughout Itachi's life, Pain promised to never uh, actually attack the village himself. Although after Itachi's death, that deal was kind of off, as we, and thus we had the invasion of Pain arc. Okay, <laughs> so yeah. But anyways, though, so that's why he joined the Akats. Those are the reasons that he joined the Akatsuki. Nothing else. Oh, all right. So yeah. Um, you know, and of course, when he was first introduced in the actual series itself in the present day is when he, he and Kisame Hoshigaki attack, or rather came to the village in search for the Nine Tails. Alright, but for Itachi, his real motivation for coming back was because he wanted to check up on Sasuke, okay? He wanted, all right. He he wanted, and of course, this was like uh, uh, like five years later. I'm pretty sure, something like that. All right. And he wanted to check up on Sasuke, and when Sa he found out Sasuke wasn't in the village, he and Kisame left and went to Tanzuku Town, where he found him. There, it Sasuke attacked Itachi, but Itachi easily won, of course, obviously, and. Pinned him, up, pinned him up against the wall and had to say more evil words to Sasuke, which I'm sure hurt Itachi even more all, than he was already. All right, and he, what he said was, "You're too weak. You don't have enough hate, and you know something you never will." And then he used his Sukuyomi on Sasuke again. All right, basically putting uh, Sasuke out of it for quite a while. <clears throat> So, yeah, there's that right there th that happened. And then, of course, Itachi and Kisame both left again. So, and I really think thought that was important, too, just to show you, you know, in terms of back then when it actually did happen in the manga, we could see, okay, this, uh, this Itachi dude's a bad motherfucker. He's so evil and, eh, and whatnot. But now that we know the truth about him, we can look back and say, okay, you know, that was to make Sasuke more so than just us uh, see him as this evil person in order to continue to stim stimulate this inside of Sasuke, the, these feelings of hatred inside of Sasuke. And really, I want to talk about Itachi's motivation for, or plans for Sasuke first, because the whole reason he... Ma wanted to make Sasuke hate him as much as he did was because he wanted Sasuke to eventually obtain the Mangekyo Sharingan and become powerful enough to track him down 
within the legality of the hidden le of being a shinobi in the hidden leaf village, perhaps even an, a high ranking member of the Anbu like Itachi once was. And so that Sasuke could kill Itachi and become the hero of the hidden leaf. That was his ultimate plan for Sasuke. All right. Then perhaps if Sasuke did become the hero of the hidden leaf, the reputation of the hid of the Uchiha clan would clan would be restored in in Sasuke. All right. And then Sasuke could, you know, you, you, you know, settle down with someone and rebuild the Uchiha clan. And they could eventually grow to their once prominent glory. All right. That was Itachi's ultimate plan for Sasuke. However, obviously that did not work. Why? Because Sasuke is a fucking shitty ass character. Always has been and always will be. But this is not about Sasuke now, is it? Oh, I may do a character analysis on Sasuke in the future. I have so much shit to say about him. But anyways, though. Ex excuse me. Moving on from that, then, I just wanted to discuss exactly what Itachi's plans for Sasuke were. Oh, alright. So, we have that, which is really cool, cool, you know, obviously that failed, though. But now, um, pretty much, Itachi's role in Part 1, after... He met Sasuke again, was done. And he didn't meet Sasuke again for another three years, okay? Because the main villain of Naruto Part 1 was Orochimaru. That is indisputable. It was Orochimaru, because Orochimaru had a thing in, you know, rising Sasuke's hatred even more, having him betray the lead, become an S-class missing ninja and shit. And, yeah. So... But in part two, the main villains were the Akatsuki. And thus, you have Itachi coming back into the, into the fray once again. Now, Itachi isn't seen for a while into it. I mean, he t technically is, but isn't, because it was just a uh, member of the Akatsuki, a temporary member of the Akatsuki pretending to be him, and a, another one pretending to be Kisame. Alright. However, he isn't really seen again in, like, for an extended period of time, like, majorly, until the Itachi Pursuit arc, which was quite a while. Which happened quite, quite long down the line into Shippuden. Uh, manga-wise, and anime-wise too, obviously, but still. You know, so, yeah, there... So, right now, I'm going to skip all the way to the Itachi Pursuit arc, obviously, because I have to, because that's the next time he was really seen, majorly. It's not worth... I don't think it's really worth talking about him in the... Uh, in the Kazai Kage Rescue arc, because that wasn't really him, you know? Same as it wasn't really Kisame, either. Alright, so let's get straight to the Itachi Pursuit arc. Alright, where Sasuke has basically killed, or or rather, sealed away part of Orochimaru in, 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 inside of himself, and Kabuto, and Kabuto took the other part. And Sasuke has, in this arc, he has devised Taka. Actually, it was called Hebi at first. He has devised Hebi, consisting of Suigetsu Hozuki, Karin Uzumaki, and Jugo Uzumaki. And himself, obviously, as the leader. And, and it's basically a task force to hunt down Itachi. Not kill Itachi, but hunt down Itachi so that Sasuke alone can fight and kill Itachi. That was the purpose of Hebi. And, of course, after the fight, they changed to Taka. But that's that's irrelevant to, this, to the topic of this video, though. Alright. So, yeah. And, now, in this, uh, in this arc... All right, there the uh, Konoha Eleven, or at least quite a few of them. I'm not sure if all of them or not, but quite a few of them though, are out are hunting for Sasuke, and Naruto ends up coming face to face with Itachi. And if you actually, I didn't 
And I actually thought this was weird when I first saw it, too. And if you look back, it is kind of weird. There's actually foreshadowing of the plot twist that of Itachi as revealing everything about him and whatnot in here when he says, you know, I'll leave Sasuke to you and everything like that. All right. So, if you really think about it, there was actually some some very clever foreshadowing by Kishimoto in that confrontation. All right. Which I actually really liked. I thought it was very clever on Kishimoto's part. Another interesting thing about Itachi in the arc is that Itachi was going into battle with Sasuke with the intention to die. He, I mean, I think it goes without saying that he obviously wasn't planning on killing Sasuke in this fight. But he wasn't planning on living either. And the reason for this was because of his disease. Alright, he had an unknown disease that... He knew that if he went all out, he was going to die. And he knew that he would have to go all out. Well, I still think he was holding back quite a bit, but he still used a lot of power, and thus he ended up dying. Not to mention his Mangekyo Sharingan, which if he didn't take... Without him taking Sasuke's eyes, he would eventually go blind from overuse of the Mangekyo Sharingan anyways. Okay. So really, there was two major problems with him going his... Uh, going all out like he did to fight Sasuke in this battle. Well, sort of all out, not really though. But be, but using as much of his power as he did. There was two huge fucking risk, risks with it. Alright. And so the fight went on. It's one of my favorite fights in the series, quite honestly. I love the fight. Alright, and Itachi, you know, he shows all sorts of shit. He shows shit that he already shown before, such as the base sharing on techniques, his mastery of fire style, all right, his Suku Yomi, his uh, Koto Amatsu, or whatever it's, whatever it's called. Uh, basically, the Crow Genjutsu they got from Shisuiza. All right, and also the Amat. He shows the new techniques they never shown before, such as the Amaterasu, the indistinguishable b black flame. He also he also shows his perfect Susano, which is the ultimate defense. Has the that fucking. Tokutsu Blade, which has the power to seal people away within it, which he used to seal the Rochimaru away inside of it during this fight. And it also has the Yatamir, which is said to be able to block lightning bolts from the heavens. And, you know, also, and so, yeah, which is why, basically, why it's called the Ultimate Defense. It also has an attack, too, but compared to, like, Sasuke's Susanoo attack, it's kind of inferior, though. Um, so, yeah, and he basically, and obviously he could have done more, you know, I mean, he had the Izanagi, which he showed much later on, okay, which I'll talk about later on, I, mean, I am going to get that far with him, alright, in this video, and I'm sure he probably, I, will, I don't want to assume, because it was never say, stated, so, I'm not going to say he has Izanami, but he at least has Izanagi, which he never used in that fight. And I just believe that Itachi was holding way back there, all right? But, Ita Sasuke was still doing really good. And the fight, like I said before, was, is one of my favorite fights. Yeah, one of my favorite fights in the series. All right? It, like, really is. And so, after the fight, you know, Itachi obviously could have won. If, if he wanted to kill Sasuke, this is proof. This is proof that if he wanted to kill Sasuke, he could have. Why? Because Sasuke was a, he was about to land the finishing blow at the end of the fight. That's how. And this is what some people say. Oh, Sasuke's surpassed Itachi now. Bullshit. Bullshit. Dude, did you not see him there? It's fucking Sasuke was about to, to die, alright? Well, Sas well, Itachi was at least about to take his eyes. That's what Sasuke thought was going to happen. Sasuke thought that Itachi was going to take his eyes. Um, and then he might have killed him afterwards. Yeah, he probably would have if that was his true intention. But no, right there, right when Itachi walks right up to Sasuke, he basically says, Sorry, Sasuke. 
this is the end. Or something like that. And then drops dead on the ground. Drops dead as a doornail. Dies before he hits the ground. Alright. And of course Sasuke doesn't understand what the fuck's going on until, you know, Toby or Obito, <clears throat> who he knows is Toby though, um, confronts him and basically tells him the whole truth. Alright. And Sasuke, you know, this isn't about Sasuke, but I just want to say, obviously Sasuke was shocked and disbel in disbelief at first. But that's basically it for, so it for Itachi for such a long-ass time. But that's basically where the whole spiel is out on the table. All right, And Sasuke makes the pledge to destroy the leaf in, in the name of Itachi, which again makes him a fucking retarded-ass character, but I'll get into him at some other time. So... Yeah, Whew, right, wow, we're over 40 minutes now, I am so sorry about this, this is a really, really long video. So, yeah, but anyways, though, I, I just really need to get this out there, though, alright, because I want to change people's views on, at least a tiny bit, if I'm able to change a few people's views on Itachi at least a tiny bit with this video, then I feel accomplished. I still feel a tiny bit accomplished, I suppose, if I can get my opinion out there, though. But anyways, though, so that's pretty much it for, but this, see, actually, I do have one more thing to say about Itachi at this, at, at this moment in the series, which is, this is ha where Itachi's plan failed, because Itachi wanted Sasuke to kill him so that he, he, Sasuke would be known as the hero of the Hidden Leaf. But there's a few things he didn't expect. One, he didn't expect Orochimaru of all people to get involved to basically have Sasuke become an S-class S, S missing ninja. Itachi never expected that to fucking happen, alright? That was not part of his plan. However, he thought he could still, still salvage what he had left. Alright during that fight, but no. Itachi took, or Sasuke took it the complete wrong fucking way. And he pledged to, to kill, destroy the Hidden Leaf Village for what, because of the suffering that they made Itachi go through. Alright. This right here, alright, so this right here is basically how Itachi failed. <laughs> Alright, and that's of course when Heavy changes to Taka and whatnot, but enough about that though. Now, um, in my anal character analysis of Itachi, I think that I'm going to go all the way to when he's resurrected. Alright, I'm going to go all the way to when he's resurrected by Kabuto during the 4th Great Shinobi World War. And there's two scenes I'm going to talk about with this. The first is his confrontation with Naruto, and the second, which ha happens after, too, obviously, is his <clears throat> confrontation with Sasuke, in which they have their fight with Kabuto, and then in the end, Itachi disappears, all right, and dies for a second time. So first off, Itachi's confrontation with Naruto. Now, this is pretty much what I expected when I first saw this, you know, they basically have a fight. Nagato, who's fighting with Itachi, basically Naruto ends up defeating both of them. And this was very clever on Itachi's part. Naruto, uh, back during the Ita Itachi pursuit arc, when Itachi met up with Naruto, Itachi actually put a crow inside of Naruto's mouth, which you could actually see there happen to. And I did forgot to mention it before, but yeah, he does. And this actually served as a trump card because, as one of his trump cards, which, all, which also failed, because his plan was that next time that Naruto would meet up with Sasuke, the key word would be protect the village, and when that said, Sasuke would be forced under Genjutsu to protect the village because of the crow Genjutsu's secondary Genjutsu ability, which is basically a, a perfect hypnosis type thing, even greater than I'm pretty, well, 
it not really hypnosis, but it allows a person to perfectly control someone else. All right. And that was his plan. I'm, I'm glad that that failed because a character's motivation shouldn't, or a character's destination should not be forced. I don't think so. I'm glad that failed. But that was Sasuke's final. Uh, or that was Itachi's final thing too. But it, of course, failed in the end. All right. And he basically says once again reiterates that you know, Naruto, I'll leave, I'll leave Sasuke to you. And then, and this also. This actually activates Anitachi, so he's able to break free from the control of the Edo Tensei. He's still alive because because the Edo Tensei is still active, but he's not under the control of it anymore. All right, meaning he can do as he pleases, basically. All right, and then and then he heads off in order to basically take out the Edo Tensei. He wants to get rid of the Edo Tensei. And along the way, he ends up confronting Sasuke. And Sasuke chases after him until they get to a cave. And they walk in it together. And before they can really get down to their conversation, though, Itachi and Sasuke ends up finding Kabuto. And one thing leads to another, and they end up having a really good fight with Kabuto. I really like this fight. Probably one of my favorite fights in the series. Alright. And... Because of... And after, um... And, and after that, Itachi puts Kabuto in the Izanagi, and because Itachi, and be, because Itachi, or the, uh, um, wait, no, it was the Izanami, I think. Yeah, it was actually the Izanami, so, scratch that, Itachi was, was knowledgeable about the Izanami, sorry, um, before I said I didn't think he was. Oh, I, I didn't think it said it was. Oh yeah, he was, uh, because the Izan. So he put put Kabuto inside of the Izanami. All right, and because he ta and because Kabuto was unable to accept himself for who he was, he never broke out of it. And so Itachi forced him, forced Kabuto to form the hand signs for releasing the Edo Tensei. And so the Edo Tensei is then released. All right, there is no more Edo Tensei after that. All right. And Itachi basically, before he disappears, tells Sasuke that no matter what he does, he will always love him as his brother. All right. Like he would, that he would basically. I don't remember these, his exact words once again, but he basically says, you know, I would prefer if you come back, go back to the leaf, but even if you don't, I will always love you as your older brother. All right, and then he basically disappears and dies for a second time. Um, so, yeah, there, and then of course he, Sasuke still decides that, okay, I want to d destroy the, <coughs> destroy the leaf because he's a fucking retard. Alright. And so... Yeah, sorry about that. And so, yeah, and that's pretty much, at this point, Itachi's, the rest of Itachi's relevance in the series. But, you know, all I have to say is that's pretty, that, oh yeah, that's the end of my analysis, or this is my analysis summary. And pretty much the end of my analysis, I would think, okay? So, the reason, so now that I've explained all of that to you, do you, people who are non not fans of Itachi, do you see the psychological complexity that his character has? I'm going. I've said this before, and I'll say this again. When he was put through all that shit, he was 13. Could you imagine putting a fucking 13 year old through that much psychological torture? All right, having to kill his entire fucking clan, including his parents, by having to leave his brother alive, that he loved dearly, and say all these hurtful things, do all these hurtful things to him, but, and, you know, and leave him basically to in pain and agony. Alright, and then, 
Oh man. And then leaving the village as an S rank class as an S class missing ninja that he loves so much. It's like so that was pretty much my analysis, and we just reached the 50-minute mark here. I am so sorry this video went so long. I knew it would be long. I didn't think it would be nearly this long, but apparently it was. Um, thank you if you actually watched to the end of this video. Um, this video I've been meaning to make for a while now. I just haven't had the chance to yet. And... So yeah, I do hope hope to be able to do more of these character analyses if I have enough to say about specific characters in the future as well. All right, because I really enjoyed doing this video. Itachi, ever as I said before, Itachi ever since he was introduced into the series has been my favorite character. Okay, of the series, and he's my one of my favorite anime characters ever. In fact, he's probably my second favorite anime character ever. All right, second only to Lelouch v. Britannia from Code Geass. All right. So anyways, I hope that you enjoyed my rants, my character analysis of Itachi Uchiha from Naruto. Um, and so yeah, anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. See you after, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.